I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Q&A. Tom, would you like to kick things off? Absolutely. And first thing I want to say is I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, it's a privilege for us to have you take time out of your day and uh, listen to the show. And if you like the show let us know click the like and subscribe button and click the share button and that really helps the algorithm it's a hungry algorithm also if you have questions send them to questions at creekdevil.com you were the guys that keep this topic alive and we want to hear your questions there are no bad questions except the ones that are not asked so again questions at creekdevil.com we'd love to hear from you okay so we have a gentleman here. He wants to know about the mind speak telepathy thing. And uh, he was, I think he was referring to the Mr. Black interview. And he wants to know, is, is that something that Mr. Black says these things or some of them can do? And, you know, what's, uh, what's Creek Devil's position on this? Well, what he's told me and, and uh, other sources are, Okay, you have to differentiate. You know, the Sasquatch, what we think of as a Sasquatch or Bigfoot, is a normal part of the planet. Okay, they, they're no, another creature out there, like all other animals, and they don't have abilities like that. <clears throat> now, we're going to go down the road, and, and we're going to re-record, or not re-record, we're going to record another interview with Mr. Black soon. Um, and he's going to talk about some different topics one, he's going to do one on just UFOs and, and aliens, and uh, because he was exposed to a lot of different things, uh, not just these creatures. But he told me that there were some of these beings that were coming to the planet that um, would, as a form of camouflage, they would make themselves look like things that we might expect to see, whether it's animals, including Bigfoot, um, normal animals you'd see out there and even inanimate objects so um at this point that's all i'm going to say about it because i'll let him talk about that when we do that recording with him but uh um, creatures on this planet i mean brains brains on in this world really aren't designed as as um, receivers or transmitters of information that's not how brains work Okay, so in, in a nutshell, I think what we're saying is these are things that are not of earthly origin. Correct. They're impersonating, and whereas uh, Bigfoot is something that is native to our planet. Yes. So, okay, all right. So that's a got that settled. You have to differentiate between the terrestrial and the non-terrestrial. I don't know you're... how you do that if you're standing in front of one. Well, I just want to get away from it. <laughs> well, I, I think I think if there's things going on, you know, because we get people who talk about, you know, orbs and UFOs and stuff like that. And I don't know about if they if they can actually make a direct connection with that. Just because you see one thing and you see another thing in that general proximity, that doesn't mean they're connected necessarily. Yeah, good point. Okay. And if we didn't have enough to worry about out there in the woods. Oh, yeah, no, I've had long conversations with this one particular Mr. Black, and he's, and Tom knows, he's uh, he's actually spoken with him, too. And and you know, Tom says, you know, you're laying there at 2 a.m. in the morning going, la, 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 I don't, I don't want to know that. I don't want to know that stuff. <laughs> but I oh, yeah, there, me, there are some very weird stuff going on. He's there. talked about a lot of strange things. And, you know, they, they used to tell people, I only deal with one crazy subject at a time, so I'm not into all that other stuff. Because <laughs> you can only fix one thing at a time or whatever. Well, it's it's uh, just it's too much to yeah. focus on all that stuff. This subject is overwhelming all by itself. Exactly. Okay, Tom, what do we get next? Actually, I should have Milo ask a question, because you had some questions. Oh, okay. Uh, let me see. Well, here's... 
when I okay from our uh, notes from the from the field and tracking North America Sasquatch that book well yeah and yeah. we were and I I went back to when we had our encounter and my question is what kind of questions should we would have asked ourselves instead of just freaking out and going yep that's Bigfoot. You know, that's a good question, It's and it's really hard, I think, for you and I to answer that because we were there in the moment, Yeah. and, and it probably would take, you know, like the rest of you were outside looking at that situation, you know, maybe asking things that we wouldn't have thought of. Yeah. Chuck, Forrest, my, uh, Tom, what do you guys think? No, I think you're entirely correct. I mean, you're you're yeah. there in the moment, and you're seeing it in the flesh and, and uh, blood, so... Uh, you know, I would agree. What Absolutely. kind of questions would you have asked, though, that we didn't? You know, of ourselves. You know, like you guys. Oh, are, are you if, talking about of, of myself? That uh, huh. if if I if mean, you if you heard what we did, what questions would somebody ask us, or what should we have asked each other? You know, like like uh, you know, I, I would ask, how do we get out of here? Okay. okay. <laughs> Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. That might have, I might even have asked that in the moment. But uh, if I was asking, if I was talking to you at a later date and uh, asking you about your uh, your sighting, <clears throat> my first thing would have been I would have wanted an anatomical description as best as possible from each and every one of you, and I would have asked you separately rather than together as a collective mm -hmm. group. I would have probably you know, let me let me clarify that I probably would have asked you separately first. And then put you together as a group and then ask you that question and see <clears throat> how you're, you're, because, you know, let's face it, it's just like with the sighting that Jessica and I had. There were, there was a couple of things that I noticed that she didn't notice. And then there was something, uh, you know, a couple of things that she noticed that I didn't notice. So there, that, that is always going to happen because people focus on different things. Um, well, let me clarify that and, a little bit, though. <laughs> there were four of us there. And the creature only made, or one of them, one of the creatures only made itself visible once, and it was to Milo. The rest of us didn't see any of them. Oh, well, I mean, see, I wasn't aware of that, that being the, the situation, but <clears throat> then then Milo would have been on the hot seat. I'd have been asking him uh, specifically for anatomical an anatomical description mm -hmm. of what he saw. And then and then I would have gone on to, well, what was it doing? What was, uh, and, and then, you know, my knowledge would be comparing it to you know what would uh a an ape uh a primate be doing versus what the bigfoot is doing and if there's anything that would be uh you know comparative to both of them and was it doing anything that was human-like so you know i mean that would be where i would uh, go with my questions yeah, there's a lot of things I wish we could have asked ourselves if we had, you know, because we were just a fledgling little group of high schoolers when we did that. So, you know, and I regret not following through with, you know, hey, we should have asked ourselves some investigative questions, and, and we didn't do it. High school, so it's, I don't think that you're really, you know, uh, I mean, I, I realized that uh, uh, that Will actually bec uh, became friends with uh, DeHendon and Green and those gentlemen at a later uh, later date, I think. But but still, your 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 high schoolers, uh, not necessarily uh, children. I mean, you're still children. Let's face it. Uh, right. You're not necessarily going to think about things like that. I I met DeHendon and Green actually a few months prior to that incident. But, oh, did you? but didn't really know them guys much. I mean, it wasn't <laughs> like they were, you know, instructing me when we were at the camp. They were, they were there looking for the creatures. You know, I was tagging around with DeHinden and Dennis Gates at night. They were on the night part of this, uh, the work there. And I was being quiet and just observing. I wasn't, had no idea. And then when Milo and I and the other guys went to the Clark Ranch, you know, we were just, out there to kind of see what we could find and, and see if we heard or see anything. And then I was going to report back to those guys. Yeah, so we didn't really know what we were doing at all. 
Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, ill-prepared. We didn't take anything, even a broken flashlight. There Crap. Was, that was the obligatory <laughs> flashlight that didn't work <laughs> or barely worked. Nothing worked. You know, it was like, you know, it's what's that? God takes care of fools and children or something like that. Well, oh, right we had then both. we were everything. So. Well, I think there, there's also one out there that says fools rush in. Um, <clears throat> but <laughs> hey, I think that was Alexander Pope that said that. But uh, anyway, <laughs> but, fools rush in where angels dare not tread. But, you know, so, we went out uh, there and, and we didn't know if there was anything legitimate going on out there anyway. The other guy who said there was screams going on, it was, you know, third-hand information. So we thought, all right, well, let's, you know, we're going to do something, so let's go out there and and see. And so it was just totally, we had no clue. Did have a tip that there was some activity there. That's all it was. went out there. Yep. And it turned out that it was indeed. Yeah, we were were there. We walked into a crap storm, basically. (laughs) Isn't that right, Milo? Yeah, we came out smelling like roses. If we just got lucky, is yeah, what we got. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. you know what I'm saying, Will. What you would, uh, the type of diagnostic information you'd be looking for now as an adult and being familiarized with this subject, would it be entirely, that would have been entirely oh. different from what you would have been yeah. uh, viewing it as a teenager. You know, you, you know that. You know, oh, yeah. that would just, it's almost like night and day. So, you know. Um, and kids just don't think about that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, yeah. I don't think, I'm sure there's probably some, somebody out there that's going <laughs> to say that, no, that they were always that way. And that there probably people are, you know, the well, Einsteins of the world. <laughs> and, and Tom, and Tom had a good, a good front row seat to see, uh, to see how I functioned in the field last summer, you know, and of course that's completely different than, you know, as a teenager, not knowing what you're doing. You just don't go bumbling in anymore. No. Oh, No. Well, you know, I, after being in the military, we have little uh, what acronyms or synonyms, and and salute would work for me now. You know, right? Uh, you know, it stands for size, activity, location, un, unit, time, and equipment. Now you can add and and manipulate that for our own good, but that's where I would start from now on. You know, something like that where it would. Give me common ground with stuff. And that's where I think it goes with with describing everything like an ape-like. Because that's the only thing we have to work with. It isn't something that's... It, 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 it allows the layman to understand that this thing is, you know, it, it, it belongs out there. or And we don't. <laughs> See, my... 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 Go ahead, that Tom. brings up a good point. Well, I'm curious, looking back in hindsight, Will and Milo, what? Why do you think these things took an interest in you? Were you, were you kind of invading an area that because you're by a pond, maybe they considered that a feeding area? It was a marshy area. Trucking? Yeah, it was pretty yeah, marshy. marshy. Why do you think they took an interest in you? If you had to, because we built a, a big fire, we had food, and we were noisy. That's probably all it was. And they're, you know, they're curious. There was like something about us that, <laughs> you know, I would, I, you know, if I was one of them, well, I'm not. I mean, just like, well, this is interesting. Go check this out. Hey, Bill, come on. Let's go look at these guys over by the campfire. <laughs> well, I think that's kind of a predatory nature. I mean, uh, it's not unusual for, I mean, campers to have, grizzly bears, black bears, or even mountain lions wander into a campsite because they're wondering what the heck's going on. Oh, you know, they yeah. smell food, and here they come. And, you yeah. know, <clears throat> uh, Bigfoot, I think, is going to act the same way because I think they are they are an apex predator in the uh, environment, and they're going to, let's go see what those humans uh, cooked up tonight. Maybe it might be something we might like. Well, and from what <laughs> the Clark the said, too, if there's not enough. <laughs> yeah, what the Clark said, there was there was a lot of that screaming going, and there had been for some time. So apparently there was a lot of activity there, and, you know, we kind of stepped into their environment, and, uh, you know, that's what happened. Hmm. Yeah. Very often. Now, is that the same area where, Will, you're talking about you guys had a campfire 
and somebody threw uh, like oh, a no, no, a yeah, spear no, no, that was different, and then, different place. Oh, that was different place. We were, yeah, that was out by where your mom lived at the time, Milo. We only went to the oh, Clarks. back there. Yeah. yeah, we only went to the Clarks once. I mean, out in the woods, we uh, we went there with John Green briefly after that incident, but we didn't go out there again looking around. It was frightening enough. We didn't want to go out there again. Yeah, well, being prepared. Next time, I think we stayed up, and I was in my yellow rain suit, of all things, on that one at my mom's. Yeah, it was wet when we went there. Yeah. No, you know, I wasn't camouflaged at all. I didn't even know what that word meant back then, probably. Oh, none of us did, but what was your question about that, Tom? Well, the, the question was, um, you know, it's got to be kind of scary, the fact you throw something up there, and did you expect any kind of a response? That was John's brother that did that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> His little did brother. Did any of you guys... No, yeah, he, well, he, we were all, there were 10 of us at the camp. We had two campfires going because there were so many of us. You, you couldn't get everybody around one fire. And uh, so we were standing there talking, and, and John, uh, his brother, younger brother, Jeff, uh, threw a rock out into the woods. And then he said, and then almost immediately, well, he asked John, he says, well, do you think I'll get in trouble if the guys know I did that? And, and John was like, yeah, you get your butt kicked. <laughs> and then it wasn't. But a few moments after that, that a uh, that a long branch come flying back in out of the darkness. <laughs> and there was nobody who lived around my mom back then no, either. There was, there was nobody. It out was there. just woods. Yeah, that was that was a big wooded area up there. So, okay, what do we have for the next question? Okay, well, let me see. Um. Uh, okay, on on page fifty six of your of your new book that I just got, and it's awesome, by the way. Let me just put that out there. You have this big twisted tree that's twisted, like I can't tell how tall the tree is, but it got to be like two feet, three feet in uh, in circumference or in diameter. And and to me, it was like, it wasn't a sapling, it wasn't anything, it was gigantic. And a twisted tweed, I mean, where it looks like you, a towel being wrung. Well, that, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. That, um, the tree was probably, um, oh, six or eight inches thick. And okay. yeah, it's, it's twisted, you know, then Milo's talking about my, my new book, Bigfoot Survival Guide. And I, love I was, it. I was sent that. A number of pictures by a guy actually up in Carbonado and uh, Washington and uh, he you know would be out there with his four-wheeler and you know on his property doing things out there and he he found these uh, several of these trees and it's just it's incredible I mean the strength it would take to not only turn the tree bend the tree over but to twist it like they I mean it looks like it looks exactly like when I use the description of uh, taking a, a a washcloth, a wet washcloth, and yeah, wringing the water out. That's exactly what it looks like. I you know, mean, I took uh, a picture of... Oh, go ahead, Milo. No, I, it was like... Well, to, it, well I, I, to me, it was just like... There was no way any man or... or it was like really good description of what will said if it was like a common thing like diseasers there would be more of them well tom so what that I, really hit what yeah, i say there would be more yeah you know coincidental yeah. trees well, no, that look just like that and and what i say in the field last july tom we were all heading from well, one one region to another and i said now watch watch for these yeah, if, it, if it's common it is not you didn't see You'll any. see it everywhere. Nobody saw right. anything for 30 miles through the forest up there. It was only in certain not, places. Only in certain places. And I was going to say, <clears throat> not far from where we were in July, uh, my wife and I had gone hiking in an area. And I took a picture of a tree. It, it was exactly that. It was twisted. It was rung around. It was probably a good six inches in circumference. And you look at it, and you're like, well, what force of nature did that? Was there an extremely localized tornado that just grabbed that one tree and it didn't touch any of the others? 
which is not only unlikely, it's impossible. So all the other trees are fine, but there's this one tree that's totally twisted like a rag. And I remember I sent it to you, and you said, yep, that's that's one of them. And that's, yeah. and that's a current question that I ask myself. You know, we talk about that, you know, what questions would you ask yourself? Um, the first time I saw one of these twisted trees was up here in Northern California, and it was in a stand of probably 20, 15 or 20 of these little uh, pine trees. You know, and they were they were about you know, 12, 15 feet high and uh, about three inches thick in the trunk. Not real big yet, but the one in the very middle, seven feet off the ground, was twisted like that tree. Uh, In fact, it was so severely done that you could actually see completely through the trunk of that little tree. Um, But it was was wrung just like a, a wet rag. And not any of the other trees. And and they were they were all close together. They were it was a cluster of these little trees. So if there had been any kind of phenomena weather wise or, or whatever, it would have affected the trees next to it because they were all close together. They were touching. And I'm sure once they get big enough, you know, some of the trees will die out because they won't get enough light from the bigger trees. They were that close. Um so, you know, you have to ask yourself that question. Well, you know, if A, B, and C were to happen, how come you don't get more results from the other trees? Right, exactly. And, you know, somebody might argue, well, that one particular tree was simply, um, it, it was following the sun. It, well, it was, you know, the, for whatever reason, <clears throat> you know, yeah. maybe it was following the sun as being twisted because you see that with junipers, but it affects all the junipers. This right. is one tree in a group of them that is twisted and wrung out like a wash rag, and all the others are untouched. And every one of these, when I when I show pictures of them, either in books or wherever, um, they're they're the ones I'm very picky about. That I don't just show anything out there. These are the ones right. that are <clears throat> that are really dramatic, and they were freshly done. They weren't old, because you could look at old trees, especially rotted ones. And, you know, weather can affect things like that in that way. Um, you know, because of the rot, they can they can twist, they can do all kinds of things. But these fresh ones, you know, when the weather's been clear and there's nobody around, I mean, and, of course, again, you examine the trunk for any kind of tool markings. And I have seen this faked once. There was, uh, and I don't remember the source, um, but uh, my friend Carlos Bozito that I've talked about from Portland, who's who's gone now, um, he was the guy who was into cattle mutilations, and, but he had his own Bigfoot encounter, so that's how we got to be friends. Um, he and I met a couple of guys who were from Seattle, and they made this really wonderful map. And this was back in the 80s, and uh, it was, you know, of the Northwest with, you know, Bigfoot sightings on it. They, they really did a nice job on it. And so we, I contacted them, and, and they agreed to meet with us because I wanted to ask them if they were still making the map. And uh, so we met in Chehalis for for lunch and um they brought some props with them for us to look at and one of them was one of these um and it's just like you would expect to find you know dug fur and i want to say it was only about two inches thick but it had it was kind of twisted in a weird way it wasn't like the ones you find naturally out there that are bigfoot related and i and upon close examination of it i noticed on either side of the area that was twisted and damaged were these large oh they were about two inches long these fish hook shaped cuts into the wood and they didn't say anything about the time but i went and talked to somebody that i knew in the timber industry and was told that uh they explained there was some kind of a tool that loggers used that would have done exactly that so you know i knew right away this was hoaxed Somebody, somebody did this to uh, try to say it was Bigfoot related, and it wasn't. Now, these were friends of Carlos, or no, no, they were. They were. Carl and I were out in the gore, in the Columbia River Gorge one day, and I saw this uh, this map on the door of the, on the inside door of this uh, store. We stopped at to get some drinks, and um, I thought, wow, that's really cool. So I got I copied down the names of the people uh, who made the map, and I contacted them. So they agreed to meet with us. And they brought this stuff with them. And like I said, I don't know where... They didn't do it. I, I don't remember where they got it from. Who who was the source of that uh, claim. But it was a hoax. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. 
which is too bad. It's like um, they can hoax stuff, but I got an idea. Isn't it better to film the real thing, take a picture of the real it's, thing? It's out there. I mean, you are not. You have to do a little work to find it, but, you know, if you're in the right areas, you can find this stuff. And it's very important. What's that, Forrest? Right? Yeah, she's got it in her backyard. I said, just come to my backyard. <laughs> Chuck, what do, you, do it. what do you think, Chuck? You I'm, haven't weighed in yet. Just call him Mikey. I'll be there. Uh, <laughs> this this whole discussion has been kind of fascinating. I was kind of wondering about, you know, what, what would I ask myself uh, about that and uh, about my first sighting or whatever. And um, I, I think... Uh, <laughs> One of the questions I might have is, why? How, how come there wasn't more people there around me when to to help me see it? Uh, you, you know, to to at least have more witnesses to to yeah. it. Yeah. Well, you know, in in Will's book, it says never travel alone. <laughs> right. right? <laughs> well, yeah, there's there's other reasons for that. That's the first thing it says. <laughs> never travel alone. Yeah. Hit. Don't, don't go alone. Okay. Well. Well, in my situation, I mean, I I was working and was by myself when it happened. So, right. I mean, sometimes, you know, it just happens that way. You know, here's a thought. Maybe they don't make themselves known or visible to somebody, you know, by stepping out or whatever, um, because they've been watching a place or to see how many people are there. And they only do it when there's either one or a very low number of people. Well, you know, there's always somebody watching. Even when you think you're not and you're looking around to make sure that you're not being watched, somebody always watches. There's something out there that's looking. Well, that seems to be the case, Milo, because these people that vanish, you know, there's a guy here in Oregon. He was with a group of friends, and he just took off up a trail by himself, and that's the last anybody saw of him. And... His poster that was about three years ago, I think. His posters are still all over the place. And Is that near Bend? No, no, that was actually down near Cottage Grove, Cottage Grove, okay. Oregon. Okay. And I don't think the sheriff's office ruled it as foul play. They just don't know. Ooh, Animal he, House, he, Cottage he Grove, just, and he Animal just House. vanished. Yeah, I've got, um, I, I've got a question here. And it's changing, Ooh. changing topic a little bit. So I'll let every, everybody kind of uh, take turns take with this a deep one. Breath. Would they? Um, okay, for hunting, would Sasquatch smell deer urine? For example, chimps smell leopard urine. I say yes. I would say yeah, yeah, absolutely. I would think so. I would say yes yeah. too. I I would too. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you why I say yes is I've gone. Back in the day, I haven't been hunting in years, but when I used to go hunt, you'd get this scent that you could spray on your boots. And basically, I think it's just essentially uh, concentrated deer, deer urine. And oh boy, the moment you spray that stuff on, you <laughs> smell it. But it worked. It really did. It it, uh, it would make the uh, it make them less um, cautious. Mm. I guess it'd be two different things. I mean, you know, smelling deer urine would be um, more in the process of hunting deer, I would think. Whereas chimps smelling uh, leopard urine would be more of a cautionary situation, <laughs> wouldn't it? Wouldn't yeah, it I, don't think, I mean, I, I have a question. Yeah. Why? Why did you come up with that question? It's on. It's on a list. I have. I have hundreds of questions in front of me. So. Oh, that was. <laughs> From somebody, or that yeah. was a question. No, that, that was that you... was a question sent to me. Huh. Well, feline, well, felines, felines more, uh, uh, mark uh, uh, their scents on trees and uh, rocks and such as that. The big cats, little even domesticated cats, do it, and uh, the males especially. But the females will do it too, and uh, and feral cats do it, and so. I would imagine that being that in the natural uh, order of things, that Bigfoot's going, Bigfoot and uh, chimpanzees and gorillas and all of such are going to become familiar with that smell. And when they uh, associate that smell with a leopard or a lion or whatever big cat it might be, they're going to 
respond accordingly and um, get out of the territory. Yes, if you're a Sasquatch, or turn you're probably, down a tree. Yeah, if you're a Sasquatch, well, you're probably going to be hunting. I got a question for that. Smelling. My question is: Is this person thinking that they want to cover themselves in? Because to me, if you're going to cover yourself in something that's a prey, I wouldn't do it. No, I don't. I don't think that was the question at all. They were just okay. just posing the question: Do you think, you know, that the Bigfoot does what chimps would do? Smell it, right? We're thinking right the smell part. Yeah, for recognition or something. Well, I've got a question, and this is kind of directed towards the group, but also uh, specifically towards Forrest. Forrest, two nights ago, you had a visitor thumping around on your roof, right? That was two nights ago? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like a horse up there? And so I got to think of this morning, I thought, (laughs) you know, um, you know, you go to the coast and places like that, and they have seagull spikes. Wouldn't it be interesting to put some of those on the roof of your, you know, of your uh, mobile home trailer house, and just see if you, something jumps up there and then you hear a bunch of screaming? Oh, I think you're going to have a problem with that one. <laughs> <laughs> you're making all these suggestions for Forrest, and, injury, I think. and Forrest right, will be able to see the end of that. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Well, you know, they use those in Alaska and Canada, too. I don't know. Y'all might even up in those areas. I don't know how much uh, problem bears are. But uh, when when people vacate their cabins, and uh, actually, I think, um, you know, Monster Quest did something on this uh, up at that cabin and wow. uh, the far reaches of Alberta up there. Uh, when people leave their cabins, they make what they call bear boards, and they're <clears throat> they're just pieces of plywood that have uh, uh, nails driven through, uh, I mean, everywhere on that board. And so that uh, if they step on that board, they're gonna, it's going to pierce their pads to their feet. So they put them underneath the, the windows and at the doors. And if they've got sliding doors, they put them all, line them all along that. And they're secured uh, to the ground so that... Uh, uh, it protects, it keeps, because bears will just, I mean, they're just troublesome creatures sometimes, and they will just push in windows and, and go right on in, and uh, sometimes even when you're occupying the place. So um, it's, um, it's oh, a they welcome use, mat. They're called, bear, they're called bear boards is what they're called. Yeah, it's a welcome mat. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Come on yeah. in. Yeah. We're about out of time, so let's go around the group here and any final thoughts or comments. Uh, Milo, we'll start with you. Okay. Um. Well, I here's another one I got. Okay. On the uh, we're talking when I was looking at uh, patty pictures, you know, and I was looking at the calves. It looks to me that's a real Bigfoot. Screw everybody else. I think it's real. Yep. Good point. Chuck? Because I was, you oh. know, I know Forrest was looking at the butt, but I was looking at the calves like, <laughs> damn, I wish I had calves like that. Chuck, any final comments or thoughts? Very interesting discussion today. Very interesting. I enjoyed it. Forrest? Well, <laughs> let me correct you, Milo. I didn't just look at Patty's butt. I've looked sure. her all up and down. <laughs> it was yeah. a girl too. And, so what does that say? <laughs> you can you can even uh, you know of course she's got uh, 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 big breasts and yeah. she's also got she's also got a scar over one of her uh, uh, her eyes there and you can actually see that in the film footage and you can see the muscles moving underneath that skin. It's not something that you could ever recreate with just a. a a body suit and plus the fact that in what was it 1967 i think was the, mm-hmm. the the time that that film was done there was no one no one capable of making a body suit like that so nope. you know i rest my case and Tom? there's no human there's no human of proportions that would have fit in that body suit correctly so no. yeah anyway and, and i'm going to well, go with go. i'm going to go with bill munns on this it, you're right even to this day, there's no human proportions that would fit in that bodysuit. And he, I mean, he dissected all the arguments piece by piece. And it's a Bigfoot, plain and simple. And there's been other 
videos and you know you get the argument that well there's no other pictures or videos well yes there are there are some out there tom did you have any final yeah, comments or well yeah that was it did you get oh, okay it? we got it all right guys well listen all right we're out of time thanks for joining us everyone thanks for listening to this episode of creek devil if you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William, J-E-V-N-I-N-G at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open now.